Here I am today talking to Jamas. Great to meet you. Great finally. to meet you as well. Thanks and very much for the interview. Thank you for everything you're doing for uh, making this world a better place and the animals. My pleasure. Happy to do it. Helping them. Yeah, no, it's it's uh, a great responsibility and I'm very happy to help. So how this idea of making, because that's what you do, you're making the world a better place. When did it first come into your mind? When I realized that the world is actually a far, well, there's a far greater amount of cruelty and violence in this world than I realized initially. When I woke up and realized that we don't need to kill and eat animals to be healthy, mm -hmm. that made me realize that there's trillions of animals in this world who are being mutilated and tortured and killed, not for necessity, but just because we like the way they taste. And so that motivated me to try to help these innocent beings and try to encourage people to make better choices. There are also innocent beings, innocent people that are killed every day around the world. Yeah. How about those? They obviously are very important as well, but I think that if we're talking about the amount of suffering and the, the volume of victims, then by far the worst cruelty and the most suffering and the most killing by far is happening to other species and it's a war that we have waged that humans have waged on them that they cannot fight back it's the longest lasting atrocity in history with the most amount of victims and there's no end in any near future that we can see so i think that it's very important that these animals have a voice but the beauty is that you don't have to be a voice for animals and stop speaking for humans. You can do both. Mm -hmm. The first thing we should do, though, is stop our contribution to hurting animals. These other humans that are getting hurt or suffering or being killed, that's not my fault. That's not your fault. That's not most humans' fault. Mm -hmm. But what is almost every human's fault is the torture and death that happens to these anim animals when we choose to eat them. So it makes sense that otherwise good people should stop contributing to that atrocity because what? how does it make sense to be against violence and killing to humans but be perfectly okay with violence and killing to non-human animals? It doesn't make sense. It, what does make sense is to widen your circle of compassion to respect all living creatures, mm -hmm. human, non-human, dogs, cats, dolphins, whales, and also pigs, chickens, cows, and fish. That we all deserve respect. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. And um, when I got my dog, I've got my dog for three years now. So that's when I stopped eating, eating meat. Great, yeah. great. Yeah, well, that's a really good way to realize that, you know, these dogs that people love are no different mm -hmm. to a pig that someone will eat. Yeah. In fact, pigs are actually more intelligent. But I would take it a step further and I would say it's not just about stopping eating meat. Mm. That's a great start, mm. but there is at least as much cruelty in dairy, yeah. in eggs, in leather, mm. in products mm. that mm. test on animals. Mm. And it's very easy to be vegan. Being vegan means you don't consume any animal mm. products, you don't wear them, you don't use them for testing. It's, it's an easy thing to do. And you can learn how to do it in one hour on the internet. It takes no time at all. But being vegetarian is just, it's not, the, it's not the answer. So I encourage anybody who does have a love for maybe a dog or does feel that animal cruelty is wrong, that's all you need to agree with to become vegan. And so I would encourage everybody to do that. Yeah, I was talking to, talking to my friends and I was saying, you know, it's not right to kill animals. And they said, you know, we have the plants and we have the fruits and vegetables and nuts. And they said, yeah, but these are also a creation of God. So why hurt those? Well, you can't actually hurt a plant because mm -hmm. for to be able to hurt somebody, they need to have a brain so that they can actually feel pain. Plants don't have brains. They don't have a central nervous system. There's no individual in a plant. If you pick an orange off a tree, it is very different than ripping a leg off a dog. And even if plants did feel pain, which they don't, but even if they did, we kill six to 12 times more plants to fatten up the animals that we also kill. 
So if you did want to reduce the amount of plants you were killing for some reason, then still the best way to do that by them. far would to be just <laughs> live on eating plants. And I think it's also about love because so people, they crave love in their life. They look for love outside themselves, but everything is connected. So I think when you consume a product and you put a product in your body mm -hmm. that is the product of violence and torture mm -hmm. and murder mm -hmm. and you create your body with that, mm -hmm. of course it's going to negatively affect mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. When those animals get their throats cut, they are scared. Mm -hmm. All that stress seeps into their meat and then we put that into their body. No wonder people feel stressed and they feel disconnected to love and they feel anxious and worried and tired and want to drug themselves with food or with television or with actual drugs it's because we're putting this thing inside of our body mm -hmm. that does not belong there that does not sit well with who we are as good civilized respectful humans which we claim to be and we are in almost every way but when it comes to our treatment of other species we are running in the wrong direction and it's very easy though for us to turn into a direction that is respectful and compassionate and it's the path to peace that's what veganism is the path to a more peaceful world for us all to live in well, let's get back in time a little bit i know your story i've been doing my research so i know the cancer what happened to you and then you cured and then you went on, the, on that cruise and met this that indian guy so I, i i want to know how did you how did you evolve so how did you what was your vision of life before the cancer how did cancer change it and then how did you transform along this journey Well, before I had cancer, I was young. I was still a teenager yeah. mm -hmm. and I was just into partying and girls, you know, and just, yeah, that's nothing. I wasn't a very deep thinker. Mm -hmm. When I had cancer, I had an experience of what it's like to suffer and I really understood how bad it is to go through suffering. And I was inspired by somebody who helped me get fit and strong and healthy after I had cancer and I wanted to do the same for others so I became a fitness trainer which is what he was and this is when I started learning about health and how how bad most people's health is almost everybody's on medication mm -hmm. or they're overweight or they don't feel well you know people are dying decades before they need to die mm -hmm. Because we're eating the wrong things, we're putting the wrong fuel into our body and our bodies break down and they get heart disease and cancers and diabetes and obesity and osteoporosis and all these illnesses. So that's when I started realizing how bad health is for most people and why when we have more information about health than ever before, we have more gyms than ever before, we have more access to food than ever before why are we getting less healthy it makes no sense but then i realized it does make more sense because we eat more meat we eat more dairy we eat more eggs and these you know the most amount of antibiotics in the world go into these animals that's to keep them from getting sick because the conditions almost all of them live in are horrendous no wonder when we eat them it makes us sick And so that made me gave it gave me an awareness of the general state of health that humans currently are faced with, the biggest killer, which is heart disease, that most of our friends and family will die from, doesn't barely need to exist. Mm -hmm. When we eat diet that is free from animal products, we vastly reduce our chance of getting heart disease. In fact, if you have heart disease, It's, a, it's likely that switching to a plant-based diet can help you even reverse it. And a plant-based diet is the only diet that has been proven to do that in most patients. So I started getting very excited about learning the health benefits of not eating animal products because I'd always believed that you needed to eat meat mm -hmm. to be healthy. And I was so wrong about that for such a long time. And then when I learned about what's happening to animals, I became very inspired to help them. I wasn't an animal lover. I didn't even really like animals. I did not care about animals in that way. But I saw that it was an injustice to hurt them and to kill them when we don't have to. Mm -hmm. When the only reason we do the best justification is because they taste good, that is an injustice. And so I felt strongly about speaking up about that injustice, about how unfair it is that we treat them like that because they are vulnerable. And the more vulnerable the victim, the greater the mm -hmm. crime. Mm -hmm. 
So I felt very passionate about being a voice for those who can't speak up for themselves. And I started getting into spreading this message. I took a one year vow of silence where I didn't talk for an entire year. After that year of being voiceless and spreading the message through my Facebook page, then I spoke for the first time on national Mm -hmm. TV in Australia Mm -hmm. and that interview was watched by millions of people all around the world. And then I became a more well-known figure in the animal rights community. And since then, I've traveled constantly, giving speeches, doing activism, making videos, writing posts, doing everything I can, mm-hmm. really, just to spread the message. And that's where we are today. Now I'm in Romania. Yeah. And here we go. So what are, what are the results you're most proud of? <clears throat> One of my speeches has over 11 million views in over just seven months and it's been described as the most influential animal rights speech Mm -hmm. of all time. Um, There's a lot of amazing speeches out there and I'm just proud that mine is alongside Mm -hmm. all of them. So that's probably one of my greatest achievements, I believe. It's, It's inspired thousands and thousands of people to change and become vegan or at least move in that direction. Also, I think one thing that I bring to the vegan community, to the animal rights scene is spreading the message with respect and patience Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. compassion and understanding. A lot of people view vegans as angry and aggressive and judgmental. And that's because they are suffering. They Mm -hmm. see this injustice. They try to tell Mm -hmm, people that mm -hmm. what they're doing is wrong and there's a better way to live. And a lot of people don't want to listen. So it's understandable that they get frustrating. But what I'm trying to teach vegans and what a lot of people are starting to understand is that a better way, no matter what, to spread the message is to try to make friends, not enemies, to try to raise people up and lift people up to a Mm -hmm. higher standard rather than push them down for Mm -hmm. not being good enough. And I think that this approach is very effective and more welcoming and breaks that idea that vegans are always angry and aggressive. And I guess I'm just proud as well that I have a story that's influential to people and I'm being invited around the world to speak about it. And it's a lot of work, but it's also very rewarding. So, and I'm just warming up. I've only been vegan for three and a half years. Well, yeah, I'm just warming up. Mm Yeah, and I think you're also the, the power of example is. Yeah. I, I think it's the most powerful way to, to, to persuade to, to show people a different way. Just absolutely being who you are. Being the best yeah. version mm-hmm. of yourself that mm-hmm. you can be, and showing that when you're vegan, you know life gets better in so many ways. So talking about those positives and expressing how much better life is when you go vegan in every way and. Yeah, leading by example is a very powerful way to influence others. So how much better is the life for you? Okay, now we know that you travel the world, you look fantastic, so what else? It's not even about traveling the world or looking good. It's, for me, the best part about it is knowing that my actions Mm -hmm. by being vegan are helping end the suffering and the murder of my fellow earthlings. So stopping my contribution to their suffering, to their torture, to their nightmare. Every day I wake up and I feel so good mm-hmm. that I realized how how much mm-hmm. harm I was causing and I realized that I needed to change. And by making that change, I helped so many individuals. There's no, there's no easier change you can make that has a greater mm-hmm. impact in this world. It saves so many lives from suffering and death. And it saves your own life and adds years to your life. And you'll probably influence your friends and family. So you're going to add years to your friends and family's life. And it's so much better for the environment and this planet and helping keep this planet more sustainable with more resources, less food wastage, less pollution, less greenhouse gas emissions. It's so much better in countless ways. So I just feel good every day knowing that I'm walking a path that leads to a more peaceful, respectful world. And I love the food I eat and I feel healthy and very strong and clear headed and more love. And I've widened my circle of compassion. Now I don't just care about myself and my friends and family. I care about all beings. And that's a very, it's like your heart gets bigger. It feels amazing. You were silent for a, for a year. You yeah. took that vow of silence. 
um, I know that my mind usually is very active and we have all these thoughts like running around our head like a monkey so how did it shape your uh, your personality that year of silence well usually I talk a lot mm-hmm. so not speaking for you is a big challenge and there was like it was like there was a battle in my head because there was so much I wanted to get out but it was just sort of stuck in there after that year though I realized that my mind had become more sharp mm-hmm. when I started talking again I talked differently mm-hmm. and my mind had sharpened like a tool because I'd been using my mind so much that it had made made things more clear mm-hmm. in my head and then I could express that clarity in my head through my voice So it helped me in a big way and it helped me learn to listen more and it helped me, well, it's ironic because I sacrificed my voice and now I have a very Mm -hmm. loud voice that a lot of people Mm -hmm. listen to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, it's been a very positive move taking that vow of silence. So there's something that you would recommend to people? Well, not, maybe not for a year, it would be difficult for them, but to try the least for it. Well... Yeah, I don't know if I'd recommend a year. No. I mean, <laughs> I did it for a purpose uh-huh. and it served its purpose. I wouldn't do it again because I think it's been done now. Mm-hmm. It hadn't yeah. really been done before. Right. That's why I thought it was quite good. But what I would recommend is people do a 10-day silent meditation, mm-hmm. which I've done many yeah. times. And I get a lot of benefit mm-hmm. from that. It's called Vipassana mm-hmm. meditation. Mm-hmm. And if you want to try out being silent for 10 days and learning mm-hmm. a very valuable technique mm-hmm. of meditation that makes you more peaceful and uh, increases your amount of compassion and reduces your anxiety and your stress. Mm-hmm. Vipassana is a very effective technique. It's not some hippie spiritual mm-hmm. thing. It's just like an exercise for your mind. You know, like when you lift weights, mm-hmm. your muscles mm-hmm. get stronger and meditation is like weightlifting for your mind. Mm-hmm. What other techniques do you use to stay centered? So, of course, there is your... Um, so your... Um, the food, the meditation. Yeah, the food, the meditation. Mm-hmm. I focus on being grateful. Mm-hmm. So I, every day I try to list a lot of things in my life that I'm grateful for, things that happened in my day that I'm grateful for. Um, I'm trying to have more balance in my mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. So less time on my phone, mm-hmm. less time working, more mm-hmm. time just enjoying mm-hmm. being alive and exercise. I, I do weightlifting mm-hmm. and running and surfing when I'm near the beach. I just try to enjoy, you know, have a good balance of enjoying life while also working very hard for those who don't get to enjoy life. What qualities need someone who wants to be an activist for a cause? I think that one of the best things you can do if you want to be an activist is get educated about the topic or the issues because when you're educated, mm-hmm. you can answer people's questions and mm-hmm. and help them understand. It's about raising mm-hmm. awareness mm-hmm. and teaching others what's happening. So if you want to do a good job of teaching others what's happening and also teaching others how to live a different way, you need to spend time educating yourself. When it comes to veganism, there's a lot of questions people ask. Where do you get protein? What about mm-hmm. free range? What about humanely slaughtered? Didn't God say we could eat animals? There's lots of things. And you need to learn the answer to all of those questions so that every time you answer one of those, you can cross that excuse off somebody's list and every excuse that you cross off is them taking one step mm-hmm. closer to becoming vegan. But whatever your cause is, I think it's very important to get educated. I also think it's very important for you to use social media because that way we can reach so many more people with the message. I think it's important to treat people with kindness and patience because a lot of people don't know about the issues happening in this world. So don't call them ignorant, don't call them stupid or anything like that. You just be there and try to help them like you wish someone tried to help you before that you knew any better. When you know better, you do better. Until you know better, it's not your fault. You can't help what you don't know. And being committed and dedicated, thinking about the victims, when you put the victims at the forefront of your mind, it makes you want to work harder. And reminding yourself regularly why you're doing this. For me, every now and then, I'll watch footage of animals being slaughtered. Not because I enjoy it, obviously, Mm -hmm. but because it fuels my fire and reminds me how bad things are and how much work needs to be done. Was there a moment when you wanted to... The challenges on your journey were so big that you wanted to give up and... What did you do to overcome them? There was never a time that I wanted to give mm-hmm. up. I was always going to finish my vow. I'd made a vow to myself and I was going to stay true to that. And I did. But there was one time where I was in Indonesia mm-hmm. during the voiceless year. 
and there was a monkey stuck in a cage, a small cage, and he had nothing in there, no water, nothing to play with, there was nothing. And I was trying very hard to help this monkey by, I couldn't get him out of the cage, I tried that, so I couldn't get him out. But what I did try to do was make the cage better and put water in there and something to play with and something for him to sit on. And then the next day when I went there, all these things had been taken out of the cage. And so the people there, I try to explain to them, this monkey is not happy here, mm -hmm. you know? He shouldn't be in this cage at all, but if you're gonna keep him in this cage, the least mm -hmm. you should do is give him some water and mm -hmm. things like that. And I couldn't, I didn't have a voice, so I'm trying to explain this by writing it mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. And there's a language barrier as well. They're Indonesian, I'm, I speak English. Mm -hmm. So it was just not getting through to them. And that was the one time where I, I really wanted to speak so I could explain it better. But I didn't, you know, but it was a very, definitely a challenging moment. Any lessons you've learned from the animals? The animals can teach us so many mm -hmm. things. I mean, you look at a dog, they're so happy, they're so joyful, they're so happy to see you every day. They're happy just chilling and relaxing. They're, all animals are here for their own reasons. Mm -hmm. They treat their families similar ways to how we treat ours. They live their lives the way that they want to live. And I think that the biggest lesson that I get from them is just that I see myself in a lot of these animals now in, in a certain way. I don't see animals as so different from humans anymore. Humans are a type of animal. Mm -hmm. And when I look at animals now, I see almost like a person, not a human person. It's a, it's a non-human person mm -hmm. that I'm looking at. So I see individuals when I look at animals now. And I think the biggest lesson I've got from paying more attention to animals is that they all have their own life happening. You know, it's happening when you look at them mm -hmm. and when you look away, they're still living their life, mm -hmm. doing what they want to live. And I just think, it's so important to realize that their lives are valuable to them and because of that reason we should respect their lives just like we would want our lives to be respected what's your favorite my favorite your vegan favorite? meal yeah okay, i tell you foods that i love i love chana masala which is an indian curry mm -hmm. made with chickpeas i love um coconut curry as well mm -hmm. at, at thai restaurant with some rice i love tofu stir fry with some chili and some rice as well. I love banana ice cream, which is when you freeze some bananas mm -hmm. and then you chop them up and you put them in a blender with some soy milk and just blend that up and it makes delicious, mm. creamy, healthy ice cream. It's the best recipe. I love rice paper rolls with tofu and avocado and salad, like marinated with some uh, peanut sauce or something like that. I love a big pasta with mushrooms and olives and tomato. I love like a, a pizza with maybe with vegan cheese or even no cheese, but lots of mushrooms and lots of vegetables, things like that. Uh, what else do I love? I love oats for breakfast with blueberries and some maple syrup and some walnuts. I love smoothies, <laughs> vegan lasagna, vegan wow. everything, man. There's <laughs> so many delicious vegan recipes. Yeah. There's literally millions. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's when you go vegan, you don't eat less food that you mm -hmm. love. You find a million new foods mm -hmm. that you love and you eat better than you've ever eaten in your life. Wow. That's fantastic. And if we want to support you, your efforts, how can we do it? You can follow my journey online. I'm on Facebook, mm -hmm. Instagram, and YouTube. And you can just look up my name, James Aspie. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, thank cool. you very much. Thanks a lot.